Hey, welcome back my fellow golf ball addicts. We have another direct to consumer line that I had not heard of, so I love doing these if you know my channel. Uh, today is actually the big golf ball crusher. Let's dive in. All right, so yeah, this is a new company I had not heard of. It's another one of those where I got a little Facebook advertisement, uh, you know, try a sleeve, you know, and I was like, oh, I haven't heard of this company. And anytime a golf, I think this is genius, whenever a golf company says, hey, try a sleeve for like five bucks. Such a great idea because again, really there's no risk to you. Yeah, five bucks, who cares? You try a sleeve. If you end up really liking it, hey, cool. And if not, you only wasted five bucks. So that's kind of how I am too. So I, I went ahead and got the sleeve, got them in, and uh, I'm excited to try them out. Uh, before I get into the actual golf ball you know I, it's a new company so I want to talk about it a little bit I don't know too much about them basically uh, there's a couple things one uh, I'm not super into how the golf ball website essentially advertises the golf ball uh, and a lot of companies do this and it just drives me up a wall I've talked about it on the channel you know, I want to know things about the golf ball. What's the cover made out, out of? How many pieces is it? Who's it intended for? Is it for a specific swing speed? But instead, like every other company, they just say things like, impress your friends by having the longest drive off the tee, maximum distance, far, 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 and just stuff like that. And I mean, it's just silly. And I mean, and even, even when you look at this golf ball, as far as what it's called, it's called the Crusher um, Big Golf. A lot of it feels gimmicky. I don't know if it'll perform that way. It could perform good, but just reading a lot of this stuff, um, in fact, let me read you this passage real quick. I just want to read this uh, real quick just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. This is actually from uh, the website. Uh, this is from their description from BigGolf.com's website. Get ready to blast it past your playing partners and crush your score. If you want explosive distance, straighter ball flight, and exceptional feel, then grab a box of score crushers and be ready to slash strokes off your score. The combination of the uniquely designed dimple pattern, uh, reactor inner core, uh, secret sauce makes the score crusher game, uh, or the score crusher a game changer from tea to green, uh, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it, and then at the bottom it says, the only problem you'll have is keeping your buddies from finding out the secret to how you improved your game so much. Just tell them you've been practicing a lot so they don't realize it's just the ball you are using. Really? That's, that's where we're going now with advertising and stuff like, guys, it just drives me nuts. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be that guy, but it just drives me nuts that a lot of these golf companies think that that's the appropriate way to advertise a golf ball. There's too much competition now to just say, oh, it goes really far and really straight. Yeah, so does every other, every, I've tested, I think this is the 87th golf ball I've tested now. All of them say that. All of them say it goes really far and really straight and uh, you've impressed your friends and yada, yada, yada. It just gets old after a while. After the 87th time, I'm just so burnt out of it. But that's what I'm here for. So you guys don't have to look that up and I'll tell you who the golf ball's for. Anyway, sorry about the long rant there. Let's get into the design of the golf ball. Starting off with the logo, uh, not a super big fan of it. It does look kind of cheesy. Um, one thing I do like is you'll notice up there in the B, like the big B next to the big, uh, that's actually a golf flag in there and then a golf iron that makes up the B. That's kind of cool. That's unique. Uh, but the rest of it, I honestly think that they should take the B-I-G-G -G out, like the B-I-G-G -G golf, and just put that big logo with the flag and then the, the iron is the B. That would be really cool. But having the big golf there, it, it looks cheesy. It looks cheap. If you found this on the course, you just throw it back into the lake let's be honest. Um, going around to the side here, the alignment tool, um, it says crusher. I hate arrows on an alignment tool. I don't like that it's italicized. That alignment tool is, um, you know, not, not very good for me. I, I wouldn't trust it. I would have to put a golf dot over it to essentially make it a little easier to line my putts up. Um, as far as the the, your, uh, the iometer coating, excuse me, because it is an iometer two-piece golf ball, it does feel pretty cheap. Uh, it, it doesn't have a thick coating on there, so I imagine the durability isn't going to be great, but we'll find that out later. Uh, but yeah, just overall not a great design. I think there's definitely room for improvement. All right, so before we get out to the chipping and putting green, I do want to talk about the price of this golf ball, and boy, is it disappointing. This golf ball, being a two-piece iometer golf ball, is $35 a dozen from the company's website. Um, now, here's the thing. This is the interesting part, right? So it's $35 a dozen, and you have to pay for shipping, which means that essentially it's going to end up being $42 a dozen for a two-piece golf ball. That is so high, and that is so crazy for a two-piece golf ball. 
I would initially, like if that was the true price of the golf ball everywhere, I would just immediately tell you right now, hey, this ain't gonna be worth it, it's gonna be a negative review, don't waste your time, shut the video off, who cares? But you can go on Amazon and you can get them with Prime, which will be free shipping, of course, for $29.99. And I don't understand that. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why, why would you have it so much more expensive on your own website? Because aren't you paying Amazon fees? Like, you, usually it's the opposite. Usually Amazon's just either close or slightly more expensive because, you know, of that. But now you're losing money on the shipping and you're doing $29.99. I imagine you have to pay some Amazon seller fees. I don't, I don't understand that. But anyway, you can get the golf ball for $29.99, which is still really expensive for a two-piece golf ball. Um, with that being the case, the numbers are gonna have to be very, very good in order to match that price point. I don't know if they will be, we'll find out. Let's get out to the chipping and putting green and let's see how it did around the green. All right, so being a firmer two-piece golf ball, I didn't have a lot of expectations for the big golf crusher model. Uh, but here's what I will say, there was a couple things that surprised me. Starting out with the uh, chipping around the green with a wedge, it actually had a pretty soft feel. It was very soft. There really wasn't much of a press at all. I would say it's more on the lower half as far as being balanced, just a little beneath that toward the softer side, which was really surprising. I thought it was going to be firmer than that, but no, it actually felt pretty good. Now, as far as spin goes, I'll be honest with you, it's pretty much a zero. There's, there's no spin to be had. Even when I opened the face and really cut the golf ball, hit it pure, and you could kind of see it go up in the air and have that spin. It kind of went a little low and had that spin. Not an ounce to be had. It, it firm released, which isn't a bad thing. Firm releasing isn't always a bad thing. A lot of two-piece golf balls do that. It's very forgiving, and it's great for intermediate to high handicappers uh, just because instead of the ball going left or right and jumping on you some way you don't want it to go, it just releases toward wherever you hit it, which is the case here. But if you're looking for any type of checkup, Good luck. I imagine you'd have to get about 25, 30, 40 yards out before you'd see any spin at all, uh, which can be disappointing. But again, with two-piece golf balls, that's just kind of the name of the game sometimes. Now, off the putter is where I was really, really impressed. Again, a really good feel, just a slight whisper click, which is what I love. That's right in the sweet spot. Um, it gives you that feedback without being really obnoxious. I hate when golf balls are super loud clicky and they're really obnoxious. This is just a nice, light, firm press and that little bit of whisper click, just to let you know that you hit it really well and it has a really really good roll I would say a 10 out of 10 true roll uh, so around the green not bad that's how you want a golf ball to start out hopefully that carries over to the full swings all right so let's get into the feel of the golf ball it's feeling pretty firm it's feeling like a lot of the golf balls I've tested lately it feels extremely firm uh, it feels a little dead off the club uh, maybe for more faster swingers unfortunately uh, that's more of a niche market I hope that's not the case but I just did not like the feel at all um, it, there's just not a lot of squish to it not a lot of bounce to the ounce um, overall kind of disappointing in the feel a lot of people are not gonna like that there are more and more people every day playing the game that seem to really gravitate toward that soft feel and that's where like your Wilson duo soft like a 30 compression or whatever people love because it's just so squishy you know I mean even even when you just take like a three-quarter swing you feel like the golf ball really takes off just not the case with these firmer golf balls and that's why a lot of people are gravitating toward the softer so my fear is that these numbers are going to be a little low because I'm, I'm imagining I'm not compressing it very well with my swing speed my swing speed is 92 mile an hour with the driver which is exactly average for the male in the world I mean the average male swings 92 93 I'm right there in with it um, so starting off with the nine iron, 86.5 on your ball mile per hour speed is very, very, very low. One of the lowest I've tested. 118.6, I lost about seven yards. 110.2, I lost about almost nine yards. 24.5, it launched a little high. So overall, uh, really, really low numbers there. With a nine iron, I don't normally mind losing a couple yards. It's not the biggest thing in the world to me, especially with a firmer golf ball. But guys, when you're losing 10 yards, almost 10 yards on a shot, that's so difficult. You know, I mean, that's just not compressing. It's it's disappointing. So maybe with the mid irons, it'll compress a little better. Let's see. Uh, starting off with the spin on the seven iron, 6,385. That's average for what I normally do. 105.1, which is slightly below average. 157 on the to on the total distance, which I lost about three yards. 145, again, lost about three and a half yards. And then 19.2, this golf ball launched very, very high. High, uh, compared to what my 7-iron normally does. So again, that's kind of looking like faster swing speed because if I was able to compress this golf ball, those numbers would probably be a lot better. And with that higher launch, I would definitely be getting a lot more distance with that carry as well. So I, I, I think, again, I'm just not getting the most out of it. But now we're getting into the hybrid. We're getting into the driver. So now it's the time for this golf ball to shine. It's going to compress a little bit better, hopefully. Five, let's start out with the spin. 38.7 is very, very, very low. 
Um, it's not why, well, excuse me, it's not very low, it's just low, but it's just uh, anything under 4,000 is really difficult with my 5 hybrid because it's just not going to stick. 115.5 is pretty low, um, yeah, definitely lower than average. 190.3, I lost a couple yards. 175.4, lost a couple yards. 14, slightly below mid launch, so uh, really abysmal numbers there. I mean, just a lot of mediocre, and when you have this price point, I'm not going to get into it. I mean, it, it is what it is. The numbers don't lie. Uh, when you have a price point that is very, very high or one of the highest, you got to have performance numbers that are the highest and they're not. Okay, so with the driver, we're looking at 3,136. That's very high spin for a driver. Uh, 245.2 on your total distance, 134.7, 224.5, and 17.2. Holy cow, that is a high, 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 high launch. Goodness gracious. And I actually did gain some yards there. Um, so that, that's good to see. We finally had some decent numbers. Um, high spin. I wish the spin was a little lower. Um, I'll get to more than that in a second. But um, other than that, the distance, the ball speed, everything was was actually kind of refreshing compared to what the numbers had been before. So good to see that. So real quick, before we get into uh, you know my final thoughts, I do want to touch on the durability. Um, it's feeling a little sandpapery. I knew from seeing that thin coating at first that it probably wouldn't make it. But if you look really closely, you can see a lot of scuffs. You can see a lot of uh, little cuts, little scrapes. And when you feel it, you can feel that. This was hit about 50 to 60 times. Times. That's just what I do with my testing, and uh, I wouldn't trust it beyond that. So it's not even going to last you a full round. It's probably only going to last you half a round, maybe hole 12, hole 13. And if it's like this, you're going to have to toss it because otherwise I don't think the roll would be true and I don't think the flight would be true anymore. So really, really disappointing there. All right, so closing thoughts. Here's the thing, guys. I won't sugarcoat it. Um, this, this isn't going to work in today's market. It just isn't. Uh, you, I think that this golf ball could be for faster swingers. I think if you're someone who swings 100, 105, 110, it could work for you. Uh, so it might be great. If, if you're in that swing speed, it might be great. But here's the thing. So is the tailor-made distance. Right, I mean it is, and it's also only like 25 bucks. Or actually, I think you can get two for 35 or two for 40. It's really inexpensive, and it has an amazing alignment tool for beginners, and it has a much better durability, and the numbers are awesome. And you know, the, the problem really is the price point. This golf ball, even I can promise you, even with a fast, fast swing speed, the numbers are not going to be enough to pay double for for the the tailor-made distance or even like you know i just done the, the b52 bomber recently that was another one that uh was really inexpensive and just really had that that response even like the die wings golf ball. i mean the die wings golf ball was priced at pretty much the same as this. I mean, it was 37 a dozen, uh, you know, 35 a dozen, somewhere in there, but its performance was off the charts. I mean, I gained 10 to 15 yards with every club. And so with this price point being the way it is and having a cheap design, not a great, you know, no alignment tool, not great greenside performance, abysmal performances with the dry, you know, it's just, it's not going to fly. There's too much competition. I'm not happy with really any aspect of the golf ball. And to be honest with you, um, all the way down to durability even, and to be honest with you, even if you're someone who, let's say you came to this because you play this golf ball and you're thinking, well, it works great for me. I, I swing really fast and I hit bombs with it. Sometimes it's easy to feel that way when you're hitting the golf balls, but I promise you there are other golf balls out there that you're going to get the same performance with that are going to be half the price. That price point just won't work. People are looking for value. So unfortunately, no recommendation for me today on this. Uh, sometimes even if there's some stuff to build on, there. but right now this is just a, a big, big, big failure. Uh, it's going to be toward the bottom of what I've tested before. So unfortunately. Guys, as always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Until next time. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this review. Just you simply watching this review helps support the channel and helps me be able to accomplish my dreams and my goal, which is to get you the best advice on golf balls I possibly can. Uh, if you want to support the channel in another way, there's a couple things you can do. One, make sure you're subscribed. That really helps. Make sure you like, make sure you comment. The algorithm loves that kind of stuff. Uh, and also currently I do have a fundraiser. I never ask for money or anything like that as far as just, hey, pay for my channel or pay for this or video, you know, I don't do any of that. But if you want to support the channel a different way, I am doing a fundraiser for a Bushnell launch monitor. It's a really top of the line, expensive one. Um, and basically for the 2024 season, 
then that's what I'm going to be using and it's pretty expensive. So if you want to, I put a link in below in all my videos. Uh, if you want to contribute to that, even if it's a dollar, it really helps. And if not, I understand too. Like I said, you guys are amazing because you're just watching the content and that is enough for me. But if you ever decide you want to give the extra, that's how I recommend to do it. Also follow the Facebook group. I have a Facebook group, Golf Ball Addicts. It's awesome on there. You can ask me questions about golf balls, you know, which one you think, blah, 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 and I'll answer them. Um, and also I have an Instagram page as well if you just like to see pictures of golf stuff every once in a while. So thanks guys again. Catch you on the fly.